Reverse engineering is an entirely attainable career, and today I'm going to share with you how to get started. Hi everyone, thanks for watching Lori Wired, and in this video I'm going to walk you through my suggested roadmap for getting into reverse engineering and malware analysis. Now there's a lot of core foundational knowledge that is really important as you're establishing yourself inside of this field, and a lot of these blocks build on top of each other as you go through. Now the first core concept that I would recommend having a solid foundational knowledge in would be programming and software engineering. Now you don't have to have a computer science degree to get into this field, but it's really nice to have a foundational knowledge of coding itself so that you can understand what you're reading when you're decompiling an application and potentially be able to create tools for yourself to help further your analysis of applications. So what I would recommend if you don't have any previous background knowledge inside of computer science is I would pick a project that you feel passionate about that you would like to code from the ground up. Now I would recommend doing this in a lower level language like C or maybe C++ and try to get started inside of this project so that you can understand core concepts like variables, methods, or even loops. This is going to look really similar if you're trying to read the decompilation of a target application that you're trying to analyze. So if you understand all of these concepts already and you're able to write a lot of the code yourself, this is going to be really helpful for you to understand what developers were doing, potentially mal malware developers, when they were creating this application. Now, the next thing I would suggest to understand once you have this solid foundational knowledge inside of C programming is I would move on to assembly code. Now, applications, when you decompile them, you're actually looking very often at the disassembly of the application. This is going to be raw assembly code in x86, x86-64, ARM assembly, or even a ton of different other architectures. Now, the assembly language that I would first start with initially would be x86. This is a really core foundational part of assembly programming, but it doesn't have a lot of more complicated concepts that you might see if you look directly at x64 assembly from the very beginning. So try to find a tutorial online or a book that you really enjoy and start writing this assembly code yourself. And if you're able to write a lot of the main ins assembly instructions as you're going through this, this is going to be extremely helpful if, let's say, your decompiler fails and you're looking at just the raw assembly of an application. This is going to be very helpful to understand the flow of an application. Definitely the core concepts of assembly that I would recommend you understand would be move instructions, branching instructions, as well as stack operations so that you can follow the control and flow of functions as they're being invoked from inside of assembly code. Now this is important for both static analysis and dynamic analysis if you're debugging an application. And we'll get into those concepts a little bit later on inside of this video. Once you've established this foundational knowledge of programming and raw assembly code, you can actually move on to the reverse engineering portion of this. Now I recommend getting started reverse engineering for Windows applications. There's a lot of documentation out there. This is probably the most popular platform that most reverse engineers target. So there's going to be a lot of write-ups on different malware families, and it's going to introduce a ton of techniques for static analysis and dynamic analysis. Now, the book that I would recommend getting started with would be Practical Malware Analysis. This contains a lot of foundational knowledge that will be helpful that should be familiar for you if you have already started learning some C and assembly code. You can potentially skip the very beginning portions of that. Now move on to the static analysis and dynamic analysis portions, because these are going to introduce a lot of different tools that are going to be really important as you're working through your reverse engineering topics. Tools like Ghidra or Ida Pro make really great disassemblers and decompilers, and this is going to be the core part as you begin static analysis of most applications. Once you've performed a lot of different static analysis on some different applications, you can move on to some dynamic analysis techniques. Now, a lot of these concepts are going to be similar across 
any different platform that you're trying to reverse engineer and analyze. And you can start out by using something like X64 Debug to analyze Windows applications so you can understand the process of stepping through each line of assembly code and being able to potentially manipulate the instructions to bypass different techniques that malware authors might be using to try to protect their malicious code from reverse engineers like you. Now, once you've gotten comfortable with static analysis and different dynamic analysis techniques, you can move on to a few different other, a little bit more complicated concepts, such as the concept of obfuscation. Now, this is really important because it encompasses things like anti-debug, anti-emulation, or different checks that are trying to prevent you from understanding what the actual core functionality of the application is. Learn about a lot of different obfuscation techniques and try to understand what their primary goals are, and this is going to translate to all different platforms that you're trying to reverse engineer on. There's no need to go too in-depth on this topic quite yet, unless you're picking Windows as your target platform that you're specifically going to be trying to reverse engineer for, but it's good to understand the basic concepts of how obfuscation, static analysis, and dynamic analysis work, since these are going to apply to all different platforms. Now that you've built up the first two building blocks of core programming concepts, and then core reverse engineering techniques on disassemblers, decompilers, and debuggers, you can move on to your specific target platform. So malware targets all different platforms. Basically, if you can count it as a computing device, it definitely has malware that targets it. So you have to make a decision. Do you want to pursue Windows, Linux, Mac, iOS, Android, or any other platform that you're interested in? Now, once you've picked your target platform, it's really important to start finding a ton of different analyses that are analyzing a lot of different malware samples for that specific platform. This is how you'll learn which tools to use. You'll understand what is the correct way to analyze something and what is the incorrect way to analyze something so that you can really understand which are the actual malicious behaviors and which are benign behaviors. The second thing that you can do is begin developing in that specific platform. If you're targeting Android applications, for example, and you're trying to re reverse engineer those, I would recommend starting to develop some different Android apps so that you can understand how do libraries work? How are these being stored inside of the application? How are you invoking these different API calls? Once you do that, you'll understand the core application structure so that you can know what you're looking at when you're starting to reverse engineer within that platform. Try developing simple Hello World applications and building on complexity, and then throwing that application that you've created into a decompiler so that you can understand which parts are actually user code and which parts are library code that can safely be ignored. If you're looking to get into Android reverse engineering, it's really important to be able to understand Java code. So try to write a bunch of different Java applications specifically for Android so you can see how the programming language actually works and how you can interact with a ton of the different API calls. Now, all of these API calls are gonna be documented for you inside of the Android developer documentation. This goes really in detail as to what the potential parameters for any different API call are, as well as the use cases and return values. Now, Android applications can be written in Java or Kotlin, but if you're specifically looking at reverse engineering, it's good to be familiar with Kotlin, but at the end of the day, all of the code decompiles down to just regular Java code, so it's not entirely necessary to be able to fully program inside of Kotlin itself. But definitely go ahead and understand all of the different Java code inside of the application and try to see if you could write that code yourself so you can fully understand what that application is doing. Now, another thing I recommend knowing if you're looking into getting mobile reverse engineering is to understand how mobile security actually works. Now, on both Android and iOS, a lot of the security mechanisms are kind of similar to each other. So the applications run in their own specific directory and in their own specific processes that are kind of isolated from all other applications within the device. So this is important to understand so you can understand potentially why we have to make specific API calls within the actual application that are going to be able to affect and find features of the underlying device. I would recommend understanding the structure of an APK so that you can know what components are commonly part of Android applications. So that the, these are the main application bundles for Android applications. Now, additionally, a lot of Android applications specifically use 
ARM as the native code inside. So this is another assembly language that I would recommend getting started in trying to learn how to write this yourself. But you'll be happy to know that a lot of the concepts that you learned inside of your x86 programming will apply to ARM assembly. Start taking your own applications and throwing them into decompilers like JEB or JDEX or even trying to dynamically analyze them to see exactly what's happening on the device. And then move on to studying analyses from other security researchers to see how their process is for analyzing these Android applications. Once you do this, you'll have a very solid foundational knowledge inside of Android reverse engineering, and you'll know what probable malicious behaviors are, and you'll be able to identify those much more easily. Once you've done all this, you should be able to move on and pick random malware samples that you're interested in analyzing, throw those into a decompiler, and you'll know exactly what's happening. And you'll be able to start your own reverse engineering process and potentially create new write-ups that will help other reverse engineers trying to get in this field. Now let's move on to iOS reverse engineering. A lot of the times people who are getting into reverse engineering for mobile will pick both Android and iOS to get started and analyze applications. So the important thing to understand for iOS is the application structure. So understand what IPA files are, how to extract the contents from those, and a lot of these concepts are going to be similar to the concepts used inside of Android reverse engineering. Mobile is a really good topic to get into since a lot of people have their phones on them all the time, and there's a lot of really prevalent spyware out there that is really interesting to analyze. So this is potentially a very large amount of malware that is really interesting to take a look at. Once you understand the basic structure of an iOS application, you can move on to learning ARM assembly. So this is useful for both Android and iOS applications. Other important languages for iOS would be Objective-C and Swift. I would recommend starting with Objective-C, writing an application, and then throwing that into a decompiler like Ghidra to understand the flow of control, since some of this can get a little bit complicated, and then move on to trying to reverse engineer your own Swift applications. This can get very challenging, so try to make sure it's your own user code that you're taking a look at. Then you can exactly follow the flow of control of the application because you know what is supposed to be happening. Now, the same concepts apply. Once once you are comfortable reverse engineering your own code, you can move on to finding potentially malicious samples that you would like to reverse engineer, and then you'll be able to find the user code inside of the application that was potentially written by the malware developer. So you'll be able to find the actually malicious portions of the application. Now let's move on to if you select desktop platforms as your target platform for reverse engineering. Now, if you're looking at Windows, you'll be happy to know a lot of your previous knowledge, of course, obviously already applies. Anything that you learned from practical mal malware analysis really applies to the Windows platform primarily. So you should be familiar with a lot of the different tools like Ida Pro, Ghidra, X64 Debug, and then a lot of analysis tools for dynamic analysis like Process Monitor or anything like that. At this point, I would recommend introducing X64 Assembly since this is similar to X but this is a 64-bit operating system instead of a 32-bit operating system. So you may see applications targeting either x64 or x86. Now, one really important thing to note if you're trying to analyze Windows applications is that they'll make a lot of API calls to the Windows Runtime API. So if you see a method inside of the imports or exports section of the application that you're trying to analyze, try looking up msdn and then the name of the target method. This will give you a lot of information about the potential arguments and stuff related to that method so you can understand exactly what it's doing. Now, another thing you need to know for Windows applications is they could be using the .NET framework. So I recommend trying to create some C Sharp applications and then reverse engineer them using tools like DNSpy so that you can understand the functionality inside of that code. Now let's move on to Linux. So very similar to Windows, I recommend getting familiar with x64 assembly since a lot of Linux applications are specifically only targeting x64. On Windows, you'll see a lot of legacy support for supporting x86, but Linux, you're going to primarily see applications specifically targeting x64. 
Now you'll be happy to know that a lot of the decompiler and disassembly tools that you were previously using also apply to Linux applications. So ELF binaries you can throw directly inside of Ghidra or Ida. ELF stands for ex executable and linkable format. And just as, this is just the main executable for Linux applications. So this is kind of equivalent to a .exe file on Windows, but this is going to be running specifically on Linux machines. Now, if you're trying to get into dynamic analysis, try using a virtual machine like Ubuntu if you set up tools on there, or maybe Kali Linux, which comes pre-built with a lot of different applications, not a lot specifically targeting reverse engineering. But make sure you understand the core concepts of running different Linux commands so you can better analyze Linux applications using tools like strace to see what the application is doing and what kind of library calls it's actually targeting. Now, if you're trying to find library calls for Linux, you can't use the Windows API. You're going to have to use the man pages. So all you need to do is either run man and then the actual method call, or you can Google man page and then the method call and understand the different arguments inside of that method and potentially what the use cases are for it. Now let's move on to our last platform. Let's talk about macOS. Now you'll be happy to know that a lot of the concepts of macOS also apply to iOS applications. The core concept of bundling all of the resources inside of an application applies to both macOS and iOS. So all of the supporting resources are going to be very similar formats for both of those applications. So if you know one platform and reverse engineering for that, you're going to know a lot of information about the other as well. Try to understand the main format of Mac O binaries, since these are going to be the main executables for macOS applications. Now this also applies to iOS as well. This executable can be thrown directly into your disassembler or decompiler, just like any other platform that you might be reverse engineering for. If you're trying to reverse engineer Mac applications, start trying to create Mac applications inside of Xcode on a Mac device so you can get familiar with both the user interface, the terminal commands on Mac, as well as the actual application structure. And again, try to reverse engineer your own applications so you know specifically which parts are user code and which parts are library code. Now let's move on to our last topic. Let's talk about how to keep your skills up to date if you're an established reverse engineer. Now the best thing to do is that a lot of security researchers heavily rely on X, formerly known as Twitter, to post a ton of different new analyses that they're working on. So what I recommend is finding researchers that you respect and that you like their analyses so that you can follow along and find some of the latest trends. The best way to keep your skills up to date would be to take as many malware samples as possible and continue reverse engineering them so that you see any potentially new obfuscation techniques, any potentially new execution trends that you might need to be aware of. The more malware samples you analyze, the more you're able to understand what is common behavior for malware, and you'll be able to kind of get really quick at finding the potentially malicious code inside of applications. Now, I also recommend turning a lot of these into analyses that you want to publish, since this helps other security researchers and really furthers the field of security research, as well as establishing yourself as an expert in your target platform. So thanks so much for watching Lori Wired, everyone. Now go reverse engineer some applications and I'll catch you in the next video. I'm in sixth position out of six. Pretty solid. Can I even catch up from this? I don't even know. Oh my gosh!